grant us your forgiveness and set us free from our enslavement to sin. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are now on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. Verbum Domini. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I cried to my God. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Bobiscum, Lexio Santi Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. They, Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, 
Can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performs no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. Verbum Domini. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. Today our readings for Holy Mass speak of persecution and murder. But they also speak of relying on the Lord to be our refuge when our enemies are trying to destroy us. We see this very clearly in our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, and then in our psalm. And then in the gospel reading, we see the Jews picking up rocks with the intention of killing Jesus. Jesus has done nothing wrong, and yet they attempt to kill him because Jesus speaks the truth. Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, At this very moment, we have in our own day someone who has done nothing to merit death and yet has been condemned to death for no other reason than being severely handicapped. Of course, I am speaking of Terry Schiavo, the 41-year-old woman who lives in the state of Florida in the United States of America. Let us make it clear that Terry is not dying at this moment. She has no terminal illness. She is not in a coma. She is not on life support equipment. She is not alone, but rather has a loving family ready to care for her for the rest of her life. She has not requested death. Yet, a battle rages regarding whether Terry Schiavo should be starved to death. She has sustained brain injuries, it is true, and cannot speak or eat normally. Nevertheless, the only tube attached to her is a small, simple, painless feeding tube that provides her nourishment directly to her digestive system. Her legal guardian is her husband, who already has another woman, by whom he also has children. He wants Terry's feeding tube removed so that she will be starved to death. Of course, he could simply allow her to be cared for by her parents and siblings and get on with his life, but he refuses. And her husband, unless something is done, will be allowed to starve her to death today, today, in just a few hours. And so, as it stands right now at 1 p.m. today, Friday, March 18th, the year 2005, in the United States of America, judicial sanctioned homicide will take place. It's true. A judge in the state of Florida 
will commit a crime against life and allow the killing of a helpless human being. It appears that if the judge does allow this to happen, if he does allow it to happen, it appears, it appears he will break the law in more than one instance and will most likely commit one or more felonies. Unbelievable. America, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. When are you going to take a stand against outrageous, unjust acts committed against innocent human beings? Are you with me on this? Our sister in Christ, Terry Schiavo, is going to be murdered by starvation today. A horrible, a painful, a grueling death. This is an attack not only on Terry, but on Jesus Christ himself. Is it not? This is an attack on all of us. If you can hear me, this is an attack on you. I personally consider this an attack against myself. This is an attack on all of us, my fellow human beings, and also against all of humanity. It is clear that the legal system in the United States of America is not working correctly. That should be clear to all. If it is not clear, where are you? Judges in the United States have for some time now and continue to have somehow unbelievable, but somehow absolute power over the people in this country, especially when it comes to Christian moral values. It is clear that the people of this country have lawfully elected legislators who have put laws into place. But then, unelected judges come along and simply strike them down. Many injustices have now occurred and continue to occur against defenseless human beings because of these unjust commands of the judiciary branch of the government of the United States. My fellow Americans, whether you are Muslim, Catholic, Jewish, Christian, or whatever your faith, this has gotten so far out of hand that we all should be standing up against this and taking concrete action. But we do very little. Things have gotten so far out of hand that when America wakes up, when America wakes up, I hope we are not at the brink of civil war in this country. This country is divided on moral, basic moral values. If you don't know what to do, I'll suggest a couple of things. If Terry is allowed to be murdered, why should there not be a stream of cars and buses on all the highways leading to where Terry is? Why should this not be happening? In peaceful protest of this legalized judicial homicide. And that's what it is. If you can't go there, then call those government officials who can try to change this. And some are willing. Some have stepped forward. If you don't have the numbers or can't find them, then call EWTN. And we'll give you the telephone numbers for, and I'll give you a list, Governor Jeb Bush, the governor of the state of Florida, the Florida Department of Children and Families, the Attorney General of Florida, the judge who is allowing this heinous crime to happen. You can call him. <laughs> the Florida Senate President, the Florida Speaker, the switchboard for the capital of the United States of America, so you can contact your own congressman. The White House of the United States of America, so you can let President Bush know how you feel about this. We will also give you any un other information we have. Your calls and faxes and letters can still make a difference. At this late hour, 
there are some congressmen who are taking action right now as we speak, as I speak, to try to stop this and to look into this and to see what's happening. And some have stated very clearly, I heard a congreg congressman this morning with my own ears say that basic medical procedures have not taken place in this case that should have taken place. What's going on? Hello? I'm getting sick of listening to myself speak about this. But no one, hardly anyone, does anything to stop this. And the church has to speak up against this. If it doesn't, who of us is safe? When you have the supremacy of one branch of the governmental system over the others, and individual persons in the government deciding who shall live and who should die, no one is safe. If you are listening to me, you are not safe if this continues to happen. This is a monumental case. And the Vatican herself has sent letters concerning this case to the United States. If something is not done, the government could very well eventually take upon itself the authority and the power to decide who lives and who dies in this country. Does that remind you of anything that has happened in past history, last century? In this kind of environment, out of false compassion, and that is what it is, out of false compassion, let them die their suffering. Baloney. Anyone who is suffering who is, or who is not productive will be terminated out of a false compassion or because of being a burden to the system. That sounds like communism. This has happened in recent history in other countries and will happen again in an environment that is so morally depraved of any kind of values other than the value of the culture of death. It should be clear to all. Remember that Adolf Hitler used starvation and dehydration against his worst enemies. And yet, it is compassionate to starve a healthy, yet brain-damaged but cognitive woman who is not in a persistent vegetative state to death. That is compassion. You have your head in the sand if you think that is compassion. Who would wish this upon his worst enemy? This is a crime against life. Where are all the organizations who are supposed to be standing up for human rights? Where are all of those who stand up for women's rights? Where are you? Where are all the churches? Where are the priests and the bishops? Where are all the human rights activists? Where are the feminists? Where's the media? Why does the media keep giving the public false and erroneous information about this case? And no one stands up. We're next. If we allow this to happen, you get injured, something happens to you, you go into the hospital, well, the government can come in and decide, well, you know, your life is not valuable, die. Terry Schiavo is a damaged human being. That's it. She's a damaged human being. She needs food and water like you and me to survive. If you or I were to be starved to death, we would die a grueling death with much suffering, just like she will if this allows to go on. Yet that is what is going to happen today if it is not stopped. How interesting it is that Terry Schiavo may suffer with our Lord an incomprehensible death by starvation during Holy Week. Isn't it interesting? I invite everyone who is listening to me, if you are able to fast today with and for Terry, what a great act of charity to our sister in Christ this would be. This would be 
an act of mercy. This message is for Terry Shivo. I think she can understand this. Terry, we are with you. There are millions of people who are praying for you and fasting for you. The best lawyers are working on your case. We are trying to do all we can to keep them from murdering you. You are a gift from God. Jesus loves you and will take care of you. Put your trust in him. As Jeremiah said in today's reading, Terry, the Lord is with you like a mighty champion. In the end, Terry, your persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. Then they will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of these least little ones, you did it to me. Then he will say, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devils and his angels. Amen.